Faxes of transition elements, they can actually give you different colors, okay? So part of the uh, visible spectrum, okay, is actually absorbed by the transition metal complex. That is actually the, uh, the, the complex have the ability to show color because certain parts of the visible spectrum is absorbed, okay? So what is actually uh, the reason, okay? The reason is when we look at transition metals, okay, they have this... Uh, orbitals okay which is going to be responsible over here is going to be the d orbital okay the d orbitals are the one that is responsible and then we do have five orbitals okay so this one okay you have one two three four five okay so there are five orbitals each one box is called orbital okay so the entire thing is called d subshell okay the entire thing is called d subshell so there are five D orbitals, okay? And they are described as degenerate. Okay, what is the meaning of degenerate? Degenerate, they are at the same energy level. Okay, this is understood. Not only D, orbital, uh, D orbitals, even P orbitals, they are in the same energy as well. Okay, degenerate. Okay, even uh, I think uh, in our syllabus, P, D, Okay, they are same energy level, okay? So Px, Py, Pz is going to be same energy level. So degenerate. Now, but, okay, when you have, okay, the coordinate bonding, okay, with the ligands, okay, the moment there is a bonding, okay, with the ligand, they cause the orbitals to split into two different sets of non-degenerate orbitals. It means that the moment when you have Cu2+, plus, okay, Cu2+, plus, when they are bonded with six ligands of water, what happened, okay, the d orbitals start to actually split into different energy level, okay? It causes the orbitals to split into two sets of non-degenerate orbitals. Okay, I want to ask you, what is meant by non-degenerate orbitals? Let's see whether you are still with me. Charlton, what is non-degenerate orbitals? Different energy level. Very good, okay. So there are two sets, okay. One set, another set, okay. Two set of different energy level. So maybe this set, one set will be higher energy level, another one is going to be lower energy level, okay? So they are not going to be the same energy level anymore because of the ligand. Now, let's actually look into detail. Now, this is, uh, we no need to memorize, okay? But do remember, if you have P subshell, we call it Px, Py, and Pz. D has different naming also, yeah? These are the naming for D. Okay, no need to memorize. There are five different names. Okay, five different names for each of the orbital. Now, out of these five orbitals, okay, out of these five orbitals, the lone pair donated by the ligands repel the electrons in these two orbitals. Okay. When they repel, okay, what happens? Okay, what happens? Okay, let's actually look at which one is the orbital. This orbital and this orbital. Okay, the ligand, the lone pair, repel the electrons, okay? And they are going to make these two become one set. And these three become one set. So they are going to be two sets of D, uh, non degenerate orbitals. Okay, so let's move on. So, because they line up with the coordinate bonds at uh, octahedral shape and closer to the bonding, increasing repulsion, the orb orbitals are split. So, you just need to actually understand that the ligand, okay, they, uh, they are going to actually make, okay, uh, DZ2 dx2 minus okay this one they are going to make okay because there is a repulsion okay because 
uh, the shape and closer to the bonding electrons. Okay, the orbitals are split into two de non-degenerate orbitals. I think no need to know in detail. Okay, let's move on. This is going to be a diagram to show us okay, what is actually happening. Yeah? Earlier, they're supposed to have okay, the remaining two supposed to have the same energy level. Yeah? Uh, DZ2, this one. Okay, same energy level. They are called degenerate orbitals. But the moment that there is going to be ligand, okay, what makes it, uh, what is going to be different over here is the moment that they have ligand, they are going to be split into two set of non-degenerate orbitals. And there is going to be a difference in energy level. Okay, difference in energy level. So splitting of the D orbitals give non-degenerate uh, orbitals. Energy absorbed from the visible spectrum that corresponds to the change of the energy. It means that when you have a visible spectrum, or your white light, okay? The white light, okay, the energy, okay? Some of the visible spectrum is going to be absorbed by this change of energy level. And some of it, okay, those which is not going to be absorbed is going to be going to our eyes. Okay, so here, okay, the, uh, you are going to see that the excited electron absorbs energy. So basically what's happening, this electron, they are going to actually go there. Okay. When that electron, okay, basically when you get energy, okay, when you get energy, energy from where the visible spectrum, yeah, when you get the energy, the electron likes to move from lower energy to the higher energy. So they actually move from lower energy to higher energy. So when they move, the, this particular electron absorb the energy from where? From the visible spectrum. Okay, from the visible spectrum. Once it's absorbed, okay, let's say there are seven. So you are absorbing two, for example, the rest that is going to be coming out. Okay, the energy absorbed, this one, I think your physics, your Planck constant and so on. Okay, so this one, no need to actually know. So what I want you to know is generally, uh, you can say, okay, this is uh, over here. The color changes arises because different ligands cause the d orbital to split by different amount of energy. So like, for example, if you are using water, maybe this much. If you are using Cl minus, then maybe different. Okay, so different ligands will have different energy. And that different energy is going to actually uh, affect the visible spectrum at different way. And that different way will give you different colors. Okay, that's why you can have cobalt to become pink. That's why CuCl4, okay, CuCl4 is going to be yellow. That's why COCl4 to minus is going to be blue. Okay, that's the reason, yeah. Now, so different color is absorbed by the visible light, different color is seen. So what is the color of zinc ion and scandium ion? So let's actually see whether you really understand this. Nicole Trisha, what is the color of zinc ion and scandium ion? White, if they are powder, colorless when they are in solution. Why? Because zinc and scandium, they are non-transition metals. If they are non-transition metals, they don't have colored complex. Okay, so most likely they will be white or colorless. Okay, you cannot actually have them blue, red, and so on. So I hope you can understand this part. Why in chemistry, we do have solutions with different color, yeah? The different colors comes from, okay, all these uh, transition metals, okay, complexes, yeah? So if we look at the question, okay, what do we mean by degenerate atomic orbitals? Degenerate 
orbitals with the same energy level. Explain how, why an octahedral complex of a transition element is colored. Okay, whatever that we learned just now. The ligand in a complex okay, causes the d orbitals to split, forming two sets of non degenerate orbitals. The difference of energy between the non degenerate uh, orbitals okay, corresponds to the energy of the part of the visible spectrum, right? So when light travels through the solution containing the complex, one electron from one of the lower uh, non-degenerate orbitals absorb the amount of energy that corresponds to the energy earlier, the difference of the energy. So they will jump okay, to the higher non-degenerate orbitals. And once that energy is absorbed, okay, you are going to leave certain amount of visible spectrum. The rest of the visible spectrum that can be seen will actually transmit the colored light, which we will see it as color light. Okay, uh, like for example, white, we see it as a colorless or white because combination of seven frequency of the colors, yeah? So if you remove certain frequency, what happens? You are starting going to see different color combinations. So that is the explanation, okay? Draw, do they ask us to draw any of the orbitals over here? The answer is no, okay? They won't ask you to draw this. They won't ask you, okay? But what they will ask you, if they ask you to draw, they are going to ask you to draw the non-degenerate orbitals. So something like this. You need to know how to draw this. So it's nickel 2 plus, okay, nickel 2 plus. So nickel 2 plus is 3D8, uh, okay? So 3D8, so you can see this is 3D8. So what is going to happen? The last two shells, okay, these are going to be known as uh, DZ2, DX. Okay, no need to know. Okay, no need to know. But the last two orbitals, they will come up. And then the remaining three will be staying there. If I'm going to use this to explain, it means this is going to be a different in energy level. So when visible light comes in, okay, the electrons over here they will absorb the energy from the visible light they will start to jump to here okay they will start to jump over there they will fill up the electron over here okay that is the time okay that is the time where the parts of the visible light will be absorbed so remaining parts will be seen by your eyes so that will give you the colored compound of zinc, uh, nickel to plus. Nickel to plus generally, I think if uh, it's green, yeah. So that might happen. Any question? Okay, you see, yeah. Uh, this is actually what I put over there. Just now I said that scandium and uh, zinc to plus, they are white in powder, colorless in solution. The reason, quite simple, yeah. Quite simple because they are not transition metals, okay? But if they ask you to give reason, uh, then you have to give reason. You see, they have this electronic configuration, okay? So if there is splitting, okay? If there is a splitting that is happening to have two sets of non-degenerate orbitals, what happens? There are no electrons over here. No electrons here, no electrons over here. If no electrons over here, no electrons can come over here. So that is what they are telling. Okay, there is no electrons, so no visible light will be absorbed in promoting one electron from lower energy to higher energy. So if you look at zinc 2 plus, okay, zinc 2 plus is 3D10. It means that all the electrons, uh, the orbitals are fully uh, occupied. Okay, all the electrons are fully occupied. When they split, okay, splitting can happen. When they split, what happens? They are fully occupied. So when you have visible light, okay, when they come, 
the electron, even if they absorb the energy, they cannot actually go up because there's no empty orbital. Okay, because of that, you don't see any color. Okay, so I don't want you to actually just simply answer this. Oh, this is colorless because they are not transition metals. I want you to, when they ask about color, I know this is actually based on your understanding, but when they ask for color, I want you to still okay, mention about okay, the electronic configuration and you mention about splitting. Once you have splitting, you have to mention for one, they don't have electrons. For another one, for zinc 2 plus, they have electrons, but it's complete. So they do not actually uh, absorb the energy and move to the higher orbitals.